Hi there and welcome back. The first part of this video series, I gave you some tips on how to sit without triggering performance syndrome. So I will link to that if you haven't watched that video yet. And in this part, I want to share with you my DIY stand-up desk setup that I used for at least two years um, at my previous job. Right now, I do have an adjustable stand-up desk that I got from IKEA, so I am not using that anymore. But this setup is great if just getting a stand-up desk is not in the budget right now, or you just prefer to make one yourself. So I hope this uh, tutorial is going to be helpful for you. When I created my stand-up desk, I used two small tables as well as uh, I think I used a box for a while also before getting the small table. But whatever you're using, it needs to be rectangular because you want to put your computer on it. You want to put the keyboard. So you want to make sure it's stable enough so that things don't fall down. It could be really as simple as this. This is just a basic plastic storage box. You could also use any box you have. Just again, make sure it's rectangular. You can put another box on it as well to make it flatter. And you can also put books. So anything you really have that's stable enough, rectangular. And then I put my laptop on top. Just what you want to keep in mind is, is that you don't want the laptops really low that you're going to have to look down all the time because it's going to put a lot of strain on your neck. So as long as I'm not looking down, you can also just add another book here and then it's probably going to be at the optimal height that I would like it to be. So you can just, you know, play with it, add more books. You may not need that many books, but I'm fairly tall. So it's really, t I probably would need at least one or two more books to get it to eye level. One thing here is this may look like all you need, right? Like your laptop is elevated and you may just get to work, but I actually wouldn't do that. The reason is if you are working for an extended period of time, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be shrugging your shoulder up and this can over time create a lot of upper trapezius tightness, neck pain, and we really don't want to do that. We want to have an optimal posture. So if, if you need to do something really quickly, I'm sure that's fine, but if you're going to be working uh, for an extended period of time, definitely make sure to add another box here. So I used to have another box like this for a keyboard. And then afterward, I just got a smaller coffee table from Ikea, which was also rectangular, felt more stable, but you can use just something like this. And you definitely wanna get an external monitor that you can link to the laptop. Your shoulders are in this stable position, 90 degrees here. You can place a book on top of this to make the surface more stable so that the keyboard is not moving. But you know, it really depends on the box that you're using. It's just a plastic storage box. So I wonder if, yeah, like you can also just place it like this and it's going to be more stable. And this is how I did my job for so long because I couldn't sit anymore from performance pain and this was so helpful. While this is a great way to switch between sitting and standing, it may not fix the pain because even standing could put more strain on the body just, just like sitting, it's just different postures. If you're standing for long periods of time in the wrong posture, you may start to feel more tension in your back and your feet as well. Again, your neck, if you're doing it wrong, if you're looking down more. So a few things to keep in mind is when you're standing, avoid overarching your back, get into that anterior pelvic tilt. Make sure that you keep your core engaged, you're breathing deeply. You can, you can practice the core brace when you're standing, which is something I used to do. So you breathe in, you contract your core, breathe out, relax your core. Just doing a few of these things to uh, remind you to keep your core engaged because we really don't want to get into that anterior pelvic tilt. Uh, another thing is also to, to pull your head back a little bit so that you're not looking forward. So pulling your head back, making sure that your head, your back, your hips are all aligned. And if you feel any lower back tension, one trick that really helped, that was helpful was to just contract my glutes and I would get such an amazing relief from lower back tension. And again, this is an option to add if you're sitting too long. So if you're standing for a period of time and you feel uncomfortable, then just sit. Maybe you can add one of the tips that I shared in the last video 
And that way, your body is switching from sitting and standing. It's not locked in just one position for six or eight hours every day. Another tip that I want to add that actually took me so long to realize that I could have done is to get an anti-fatigue padded standing mat. And because I remember I would be wearing these flat shoes and after a while my feet would just get so tired from standing. And my legs will be tired and it was just one of those things. If you're standing for too long, your legs are gonna start getting tired. They're, they're padded, they provide supports for your feet, and you're less likely to develop fatigue on your feet and knees and legs in general. So I would link to um, one that I looked up in Amazon below this video. Um, if you do stand for a long time every day, it, it may be something that you can invest in. Sometimes my legs will get tired, so I'll, I'll start to just kind of balance on one leg, shift into one leg to kind of relax the other one. Just avoid doing that because when you're starting to balance on just one leg, you're more likely to start creating imbalances. You know, there's more hip dropping and hiking here. And one of the things that I would recommend for you to do is to just strengthen your glutes, make sure you're standing on both legs. And when you're tired, simply just take a break and sit down for a little bit, you know, instead of always going on one leg. This also can create some QL tightness if you're always going like this, you know, on one leg, kind of side bend and relax. So over time, you can start to create some lower back pain on just one side which again, you could release, but it's overall in the long term, it's just not something you wanna do. Again, just making sure the screen is eye level as much as possible, making sure you keep the elbow at 90 degree angle, uh, no shrugging when you're typing, and um, keeping your core engaged, standing nice and tall, breathing, making sure your neck is aligned with the rest of your body, you're not pull, uh, putting your, uh, pulling your head forward, um, and taking breaks between sitting and standing. Basically, you just want to switch them up. And I do remember it was it was a bit of work because every time I sit down, it's like I have to kind of take the laptop down, take this down. And uh, But if you have more space, it may not be that difficult. You can just basically put the, the laptop down. And whenever you're ready, you can definitely invest in an adjustable stand-up desk. It's something that I invested in and it, it, it has been just so amazing to kind of just press a button and the desk will go up. But I still follow these techniques and I still switch between sitting and standing. And when I'm sitting, I'm applying those, the tips and techniques that I showed you in the last video, which I will link to it again. Um, so I think this is it. If you have any more tips that you've tried yourself, please make sure to comment below. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching. I will see you soon.